Hola amigos, soy Kalila Reynolds and welcome, bienvenidos a, why is it taking stock in Spanish? <laughs> I have no idea. Guys, I've been obsessed with this show like on Netflix in Spanish. How many of you watch La Reina del Sur? Oh my gosh, like I've just been soaking it in. I feel immersed, like I'm learning, you know, the language properly. <laughs> But anyway, welcome to another live edition of Taking Stock. We're bringing you all the latest business news and telling you how it will affect you and your money. All kinds of news happening this week. Everybody's been sending me this new thing about Instagram and Facebook verification. Seems like a good move. I will check it out when it becomes available in Jamaica. I don't know if I'll subscribe yet, but it seems... Based on what they've described, it seems better than what Twitter has. Because Twitter, anybody can just pay their $7 for verification, which makes no sense. But at least if they actually do verify your identification before you, um, you become verified, then that at least makes some sense. And they say that they're going to be proactive and monitor impersonators on your behalf. So if that is the case, that sounds like it's going to be worth it. Now, I also want you guys to head over to my website, kalilareynolds.com slash newsletter once this uh, this live has ended to get my newsletter straight to your inbox twice a week. And I'm also going to be rolling out something fairly soon regarding that newsletter. You will have more options to interact uh, with us, with me in particular, and also with news, you know, get some more news. So just make sure that you stay tuned for that. We also have a sale coming up this weekend. It's my post-birthday sale. So you're looking at a 40-year-old. 40 where, right? Only up here, up here, up here. Not here, obviously, because this is glowing, right? Um, but I do have a post-birthday sale coming up because my birthday weekend, I was forbidden from working. And then after that, I went to Belize and now I'm just getting around to doing it. But I want to do it before February ends because I owe it to you guys. And it's going to be a big sale. Turning 40 and the theme of the birthday weekend was naughty 40. So mm, I'm going to have a naughty 40 sale, 40% off. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And of course, let me know where everybody's joining us from. I want to know in the comments. Now, here's a look at what's coming up in tonight's show, followed by what's hot in business. And of course, come on, let's get this money. You know Keisha Bailey as the profit jump starter, but how did she get her own jump start? What was her journey like to becoming the boss chick that we now know and love from Kingston to Toronto? She'll spill the tea. And the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. Tropical Battery is looking to expand. And it's the one-year anniversary of the war between Russia and Ukraine. We'll discuss. But first, here's What's Hot, brought to you by JMMB Group, your best interest at heart. The Financial Investigations Division, FID, says it expects to lay additional charges against Jean and Panton and other persons implicated in the SSL fraud case. Panton was remanded to police custody when she appeared in the Supreme Court on Friday. The former wealth advisor is at the center of the multi-billion dollar fraud investigation at Stocks and Securities Limited SSL. According to FID, it is the largest case of financial fraud ever in Jamaica. Panton has been charged with breaches of the Larceny Act, Proceeds of Crime Act, the Forgery Act and the Cyber Crime. It's alleged that she swindled billions from 40 investors over the course of 10 years, including Olympia and Usain Bolt. The Financial Investigations Division said it is still unable to quantify the exact amount which has been defrauded from all the affected accounts. Panton is scheduled to return to court on February 24. The Bank of Jamaica has temporarily restricted sterling asset management from buying and selling U.S. dollars to and from cambios and authorized dealers. According to Sterling, the three-month suspension which began on Monday was due to a clerical error on their part. The company explained that the BOJ requires licensed cambios to manually post an opening bid and an opening offer every day on its FX trading platform. Sterling said that on three occasions since the launch of the platform, they failed to post their opening bid and offer. 
The suspension only affects Sterling's ability to trade with other Cambio and authorized dealers. Sterling's Cambio will still be able to buy and sell USD to any person or entity that is not a Cambio or an authorized dealer. JMMB Bank and WePay Solutions have teamed up to launch the bank's latest point of sale. These include POS device, e-commerce and QR code or scan to pay. The banks of the POS Solutions accept all Visa and MasterCard debit and credit cards. JMMB first announced the rollout last year as part of its digital transformation. We call all 363,000 U.S. vehicles with its full self-driving driver assist software due to safety risks. The full self-driving feature is able to navigate local roads with steering, braking and acceleration, but requires a human driver prepared to take control at any moment. The U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said that Tesla's FSD feature led to an unreasonable risk to motor vehicle safety based on insufficient adherence to traffic safety laws. The agency said the FSD beta system may allow the vehicle to act unsafely around intersections such as traveling straight through an intersection while in a turn-only lane or entering a stop sign controlled intersection without coming to a complete stop. Tesla will reportedly attempt to fix the FSD feature which costs $15,000 through an over-the-air software update. What's Hot was brought to you by JMMB Group, your best in... This segment of Taking Stock is brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agency. Insurance made easy. Just two words with me can change your life. But don't take it from me. Why I decided to buy Kalila's Masterclass, which is, for me, was a game changer. I'm Kalila Reynolds, financial journalist and educator, and I'm on a mission to help you get better with money. Take my all-new Money Mission Masterclass. We're talking about budgeting. My top things today were about budgeting and investing. We're kicking bad debt out the door. And I also learn about how to pay off your credit card debt. And I'm giving you the keys to wealth creation by helping you getting started with investing. This masterclass helped me to start my own um, investment journey. I had so many takeaways. The way that I look at money now and saving, I don't I look at it different now. With a bonus module from Keisha Bailey, my girl, the profit jump starter, who'll show you how to find great companies to invest in. I've been in the investing industry now for over 18 years. So give yourself the best gift. Go to kalilareynolds.com slash masterclass to join the money mission. Let's get this money. Hey, and remember 40% off starts Friday on the Money Mission Masterclass. And you just saw the topics that we cover. And you know, at the end of it, you are going to have a plan to manage your debt, a plan for your money. You're gonna know how to start investing and be able to actually start. You're gonna know what to invest in, super important. By the way, guys, if you hear me coughing every now and again, still kind of recovering from last week. Remember last week when I had, you know, my voice was all over the place? I'm mostly recovered now, but, uh, you know, it comes and goes. Let me shout out the people in our comments, especially our early uh, viewers. Horace Hall says, good evening, money magnets. I like that one, money magnets. Mm. Antoinette Todd, good night to the money trees. We're ready to flourish. You guys are on a roll this evening. All the metaphors, money magnets, money trees. Uh, one love all says two superstars. Yes, LeVar says looking fabulous as ever. Thank you, LeVar. Empress joining us from Florida. LeVar as usual in Mandeville. Chipmunk saying get this money, get this money. I've been finding it harder to get this year, but we're positioning for the dividends. You're absolutely right. Uh, the stock market has been down so far this year. And, you know, we're in it for the long haul, right? And your plays dividends. Awesome. Kish Lindsay says, hello, everyone. Strong Link is joining us from Norbrook. Damar says, that's a great series. La Reina del Sur, you finished it? The, the Spanish version or the English version? Because they're very different. I watched the English version like a couple years ago, and it was extremely good. But the Spanish version is a telenovela, and each season is like 63 episodes. <laughs> it's really, really long. So if you finish it, you're good. Um, I'm on it right now. I'm on season two. So it's Demar, yeah. 
big things. Uh, and Kemoy also joining us from Mandeville. Let's get into tonight's interview. We have a very special guest. It is somebody familiar to you if you are a regular viewer of the show. And that is Keisha Bailey. Most of you know her as CEO of Profit Jumpstarter. You know her as a regular on the analyst segment of the show. But how did she get where she <laughs> is today? Mm -hmm. What was that journey like to become the boss chick that we now know and love from Jamaica to Toronto to the world? Keisha Bailey with the purple lipstick this week. <laughs> <laughs> Show yourself, my girl. Yeah. <laughs> us. And we, she now takes the spotlight. So not, not on the, well, you are on the analyst panel as well. Yes. <laughs> but we want to know more about you. So tell us, like, how did you get started? Were you always into um, finance and investing? So I've, I've always been in finance from ever, from 2005. A long time ago, don't want to really age myself, but I've been in the financial sector for a very long time. Even though I look, you know, young and cute up, I've, I've been, I've seen it all I'm from 2005 to now. I started from Jamaica way, way back at, from when I did my undergrad in actuarial science. And it started working. Oh, you know, it's very smart people take actuarial science. Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's a, like, I'm a, that's like a papa. I hear that's like super hard. Yeah, so it's like hot girl nerd. That's what they call it. <laughs> hot girl nerd. So actual science undergrad, then, you know, working for one of the banks in Jamaica as a portfolio manager. That's what I was doing. Managing money for pension funds and large institutions. That's really when I saw the power of investing because I didn't grow up with money, right? We didn't talk about money because we never have any money to talk about. But it was when I started working in the investment space, I realized, wait, there is something to this thing. There is a way to build wealth. And it comes from this investing, putting funds into different type of security and then the value go up. All right. How do you manage that value to make sure it continuously goes up? I was learning that for about five years while I was with that bank. And then from that, I started doing more research. I worked with other banks in Jamaica and I was able to build up my skill set very quickly because I was exposed. And during that time, you know, lots of things going on, all in cash flows, different yes, things popping up time. all over the place. That was the time, you're right. All in yes. cash flow. <laughs> Did you invest in either of those? But yes, very naively, um, and got burned well, with people, everybody that's else. Why I asked. Many, many people did. Yeah, so that's when for me that was a painful lesson in do your due diligence and know your money. That was a very painful lesson because I was still very young, and you know, you jump on to the latest thing with everybody, you're following persons, and you get burned. And I said, Well, you know, I have to learn from this, I have to be better at picking out and doing my due diligence for myself which, which one did you invest it with all in okay. and then there were some other ones you know may daisy and the, lots of new ones were popping up so i said all right you know let me let me jump in because everybody was there saying they might make money and it was just returns and high returns to people double tripling all kind of things and you jump in right you say, all right, let me see what can go on for me. And the minute you jump in, don't that's work. when things crash. So, that's when you call in, no phone line. I remember going over to the office, locked down, locked down, bored up, wow. bored up. And I, I said, what's going to happen to my money? What's going to happen? It was a very painful lesson for me. And it taught me also another thing that money turns over, right? You lose it, you win some, you lose some. But you know, as long as you're around to go another day, you can always make it back. That was the big lesson for me there. That, you know, That's true. You can lose money, uh, but it's, it, money is replaceable. Money is always yeah. replaceable. Um, so what was I going to ask you about? Oh, in hindsight, were there any red flags uh, from that Olin experience? Yeah, um, not understanding what the company is doing. So anytime you're going for any form of investment, and all you can hear is, yeah, man, you're going to make money. And that's all you hear. Usually, the complete opposite happen. You lose money. If all somebody can tell you is, look here, you're going to make money. Just follow it, man. You're going to make money. By the time you do that, 
you more most times you're going to lose. You have to know the specific details around the investment. You have to understand what you're getting into. Where are you putting your money? And understand that and be able to explain it back to yourself and to others that I'm putting my money into this company or into this form of investment because of X, Y, Z. If you can't answer that question, don't put your money into it, the investment. Ooh. That's what I learned here. Because all I could say at the time is, yeah, you're going to make money. <laughs> you're going to make money, so just do it. And it didn't work out. You lost mm. money for money. I came to Jamaica right after those two things crashed. And I remember the whole receivership process because I was covering it as a journalist. I remember people, you know, yeah. a lot of people going to the office, banging on the door, trying to get access. I remember all of that. But I wasn't here for the period when it was booming and people were making money and, and not knowing how. So that's interesting that you experienced that and learned from that early on and and you learn from it the right time because you were still young you know, much uh, 20s much yeah enough. still young then uh -huh. and it was painful it was painful i remember even my mother did <laughs> they put money in there and she never liked it because she's older so she never liked that to this day she keeps reminding me about it <laughs> that look here you make me put my money over here so because the, the same thing i told her your money must make money that's what i hear but she keeps saying that like, I can't take as much risk as you. I'm older. I can't do the same thing. So she didn't put as the same amount. She put a smaller amount, but she lost as well. So from that, you know, if I'm coming to her with any form of strategy or target or about anything, I have to come correct with my facts. I have to be able to clearly show her exactly what she's getting into. And from that day, she too, if she don't understand, she not do it. If she don't understand what I'm talking about, she just say, look, here's better. Just leave it over there because I don't understand what you're talking about. And then right after that, you have 2008 global recession. And then you have Jamaica in IMF program. And yes. you have 2010 Tivoli Gardens incursion. Yeah, <laughs> I was there for all of it. I was there for all of it. I remember 2008 coming in because at that time I was you now on the risk management desk. So I was protecting the bank's money and coming in, you know, we had a position with Lehman and we came in and you can't call Lehman, you can't get through your call, phone gone to some weird recording, right? It was a Monday morning, are you coming? Can't nobody on the other line. Until you live through that, you can't really understand what investment losses, you know, because a lot of people see things happen and they say well you know my portfolio down i see red and i'm panicking but it's a whole other situation when you're seeing the red you're trying to call the broker and the broker can't pick up because they are shut down how wow. do you maneuver that what do you do because your money is gone right you can't just click sell and come out and say all right well i got a loss you literally cannot exit the position wow. you can't exit that at all that's that's where quite a few people in Jamaica find themselves today who are clients of SSL because they're just stuck. Yeah, your money tied up. And to be able to figure out what do I do there? Can I contact the bank? Can I have some discussion with you? Essentially, what happened after time we went into that receivership process and we got back probably, you know, 10 cents on every for every dollar that was invested, you got back 10 cents of that money. So, I mean, we're just at that point very grateful to get back something, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're young at the time when somebody said, you know, you should have known better. I never knew better. I was just starting out. We really and truly did not know better. But over time, I was able to start doing better for myself. You know, you learn all the things set up. You have to make mistakes at first. But over time, you get better. You build up that expertise. So today, that can't catch me with a long, can't <laughs> catch me because I know how to spot it from a mile away. Yeah, that's true. That's very important. And I like, I see Patricia saying that she likes the transparency. I like it too. She says, even the money guru can make mistakes. Then we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves. Love the money lessons learned and applied now speaking from experience. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so what happened next along this journey of life? Along the journey, no, it, I was getting that experience in the region, so investing in Jamaica and in the Caribbean, but I knew there was more to it, right? So I wanted now to get international experience. How do I invest money on a global scale? 
what do I do there? So that's now the trip over to Canada to do my MBA at the IVA School of Business. I did an MBA in finance, graduated with distinction. There I tell you guys I'm a nerd. Once it near book is me. So I graduated with distinction with my MBA in finance. And then I started working with one of the large banks in Canada. I know I was managing global money, not just regional Ooh. money, global money. China, Japan, UK, US, Canada, all over the world. And then a lot of new types of investments as well. So not only stocks, but we're looking at options. We're looking at infrastructure. We're looking at mortgage. We look at real estate. So I was getting a whole wide breadth of expertise. And I fully absorbed myself into it because I really didn't want to know all the things set up. Because with investing, I was seeing more and more the potential to build wealth. And the more I lean into it, the more I say, wait there, all right, there is opportunity here. Because for me, remember, I never grew up with the money. And money creates possibilities. So as mm -hmm. I was leaning in and seeing those possibilities, I said, look here, more on some of this, more on some of these possibilities. So let me learn as much as I can. Let me apply myself as much as I can so I can learn because this looks like it is the way. And the more I lean to it, it paid off. Where did you grow up, by the way? Augustown, Augustown. All the way down there, right? To single mother. She's probably listening and over there is listening, but single mother. And she worked very hard. Her main thing is education because she works with the, the university. And her main thing is you have to study a book because education mm -hmm. is the way forward. So she always would push us, study a book, study a book, study a book, which I guess is why, you know, you just study a book. But as you're studying, you have to apply. It's not just study the book. You have to apply where you're learning. You have to get the practical experience and build on that experience so that you can make your life better. Wow, another product of Augustown. He's not just Sizzler come from Augustown. Yes, yeah, Sizzler. <laughs> Big yard, Augustown. Sizzler Kalanji, yeah. Hey. All right, so you're in Toronto now, and you're managing international portfolios. $100 billion, them give me to manage. $100 billion. Some of the Is large... Is that billion? B, 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 B. $100 billion. Billion dollars? Would I be? Yes. So, all right. So, how much pressure did you feel? A lot because I, I portfolio as this black girl from Augustown, Jamaica, in a white man's country, and they're giving you a hundred billion dollars to manage. Right. So first yeah. Of all, you must have earned that because they're not giving you if they don't trust you. <laughs> right. So, yes. So you. you Go through it, demonstrate why you know you push on, but it was you know the imposter syndrome come up sometime and you say, Look a girl from Augustone, you know, and here I am, you know, working in this corner office, managing all these billions of dollars. Like my clients all had to have, you know, 10, 20 million US or Canadian for me to see them. So it was wow, look at me, like doing all this and a lot of times the imposter syndrome would come in and you say, boy, I really know me. I do. do I know what I'm doing? But then when I see the return, I say, of course, girl, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing because look at the performance. Look what is happening. 100 billion Canadian. A lot of money. Holy for money. So I had to keep reaffirming myself because as much as you climb the corporate ladder, there's always that thing because you have performance appraisal, you have your boss have to tell you something. So there's always that, you know, imposter syndrome that comes up sometimes where you, you question yourself. You say, really, do I know this? And sometimes I know they would say to me, you know, boy, you're really good. Keisha, you're good, but not that good. That always kind of in the back of my mind. No, these days I'm trying to just box it out, but that was always something they'd say like, you know, you're good, but not. But my good, but no, like, right? So I had to keep reaffirming myself. What other challenges did you face in that role? So the financial field generally is a male-dominated industry. Beer man, mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of men are in finance, right? A and small it's white men too. Women. So Not just men, but also white men. White men, yes, a lot of white men. And they are at the, the top, right? So it was... Just me. I remember when I just started there at the bank, I was the only black woman. And that was strange to see because I was like, all right, where, where, are, the, where are the other 
<laughs> black women. There were few women, but just me alone as a black woman. And it, you know, you really have to kind of make sure that you are strong in yourself to go through that because black woman from the Caribbean, my accent, you know, a lot of times they'd say, well, what are you saying exactly? What exactly are you, are you saying? You know, there was this thing with the word ask, A-S-K. We mm -hmm. say, you ask uh, me a question. They say, ask. So every time I would say, what are you asking? They hear the word ask, A-X-E. So they are saying, are you trying to cut me? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? But the accent, sometimes it would become, you know, a little inhibitor, but I still push past because at the end of the day, skill is skill. Knowledge is knowledge. Expertise is expertise. You can't fight it. So you have to keep pushing. And that's what I learned to do in that environment. So no. But how did you even get that opportunity, Keisha? Because a lot of people, and I even see today in link, on LinkedIn and people who live in Canada talking about um, the experience there is very difficult once they are considered an outsider. Uh, yeah. And, and you are an outsider in many ways, being Black, being Jamaican, being a woman. How did you get that opportunity to begin with? So from business school, when I was there, at the time we were just having the emergence of diversity and inclusion. And mm. so a lot of companies were putting focus on, we need to increase the numbers of black and women inside the company. So I leaned into that and I said, all right, and one black woman, see me here, see me here. And I did a lot of networking to, to land the job that I got, whole heap of networking, talking to a lot of persons, sharing my story with them, talking about my expertise. And then that helped me know for them to become advocates for me. So they would go and tell other people about me. And that helped me know to land that job in banking. Right. I'm seeing lots of comments in the chat. Let me take some before I ask my other questions. Peter Gay Campbell says, it could have been racial, read a questioning of your abilities or racism. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I think I thought that too. I was like, yeah, are they questioning me because, you know, black and then, you know, the Jamaica Stock Exchange at that time was very small compared to a lot of these larger international stock exchanges. So you always would get, well, you know, that's how they do it down there. But I had to keep reaffirming myself that finance is finance is finance, no matter what the concepts, the theories they hold, whether in Jamaica or international, you just have to make your adjustment the the theories. Yeah. Kemoy says you are questioning yourself. That's called imposter syndrome. Yep. Even I get it still. Kai Bernard says sounding like a little hidden figure in the making from Jamaica. Oh, yes, Kai. <laughs> I like that. And then <laughs> Raja want well, fasten your business now. Raja <laughs> wants to know how much did you grow the billion? Well, it's a yeah, hundred so billion. Year, the performance was more than 10%. That's what we push for. So as you keep growing and there were multiple accounts i had 258 accounts to get the, the 100 billion a lot of different accounts so we track the performance at each of them right and then when you're thinking about so many different accounts so many different strategies you have to go you have to know what you're doing right yeah and 10 percent on 100 billion is a holy per money <laughs> it's a lot of money 10 percent on our 100,000 is just 10,000 10 percent on 100 billion is ten billion dollars right? A, a lot. lot. Ah, okay. Uh, Strong Link wants to know: since you learned from experience, did you see the crypto crash happening? So crypto was a big thing. The the thing with the crypto crash, I don't believe it's really a crash. I believe what happened there was a lot of speculation that pushed the price up very quickly. Crypto itself, as a future of money, I think is still here to stay. But the speculative part where people were actively trading it to push on the price, that may be gone for now. But crypto as the future of money stayed. So I have crypto, but I have it for the long term, like 10, 15 years. I, I'm not doing the speculation and the quick trades with it. Mm. Kemoy says, your story is incredible. Never knew this since following you about two years now. These are the stories and people that should be highlighted. That's right. why we have her on, Kemoy. <laughs> right. So... <laughs> To make sure the story is told. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So all of this has happened. And now you're, uh, I don't want to say back in Jamaica because you're between Jamaica and Toronto. Yeah. You're here a lot. What led you now to, because you have this big portfolio managing international stocks of 200 and 
not just stocks, but portfolios, yeah. 200 and odd clients, $100 billion on the management. And you decide now that you're going to start Profit Jump Starter. Start, yeah. And you're going to go out on your own. Why? You but are right, rolling so it. You, you are people saying a non audible father, father God, non audible father God. And it really is. The thing is that um, I wasn't feeling the impact anymore because one day it just kind of dawned on me that you're making rich people richer. Mm. You're just making rich people richer. But I would always see because it's just me alone as a little black person, a black minority. There was not many people around me that look like me that could resonate with my experience. And I said to myself, there will never be people around you if you don't do your part to help. That's really it. Because I, 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 I can trade for myself. I can invest my own money. But what about everybody else? What about the, the young Keisha growing up? Who is going to show her what to do and say, look here, there are opportunities for you if you learn how to do this thing called investing. So that just kind of rests on my spirit. I couldn't let it go. Couldn't. And then my husband kind of just pushed me out there and said, look here, you need to do the thing. You need to go out and show people what you know because it is powerful. You need to show persons. And then the thing for me, I'm very good at explaining things in a very simple way. And when it comes to financial terms, not a lot of people know to do that. People talking a Japanese and all kind of mm -hmm. different jargon. Jargon, yep. Yeah, and you can't understand what they're talking about. So to make wealth building easy, people have to feel like they can do it. They have to feel empowered to take action. So I am good at teaching in such a way that you say, yeah, man, all right, I can do this. And then from that, no, you're going to take action. You're going to start doing your little investing, start making your money work for you before you know it. You know, you're rich just like everyone else. But unless somebody has that discussion with you, you won't know. Because in our circles, nobody not there talking about money. We are talking about everything else, but mm -hmm. money, but wealth creation. In other circles, that's all they talk about. They're talking about their portfolios. They're talking about, you know, the different mutual funds, their assets. We're not talking about that. So yeah. move that over. I say, you know, I have to be there. After I love to see you. I love to see the shift in in parts of our culture as well, where we have people now talking about what stocks you own. You buy that IPO, and and it's now becoming part of popular culture. And I want to see that, just like you, just get to that level where everybody's talking about it, where that's just right. common place. That's that's regular, normal discussion. That's not nothing outstanding, or there's no outlier there. Yes. That's just normal. That's what I want. So it's not how, you know, we are talking about well, we'll what's for Netflix or we'll go which party, but we're talking about our portfolios, mm -hmm. talking about our assets or real estate, talking about what was the performance of your portfolio last night. That's what we need to do so that we can bring everyone up. As we think even about kids, most people know you're having kids. What are you leaving for them? What are we doing? We have to have yeah. that discussion to set up the future as well. So how long ago was this that you made that transition? It started um, 20, late 2021. That I said, all right, let's go full speed. Let's go into, you know, starting a business. Never know the first thing to do, but I said, all right, let's go. I knew I had the passion and the desire to, to figure out what to do. I know that, you know, we can go find the right people or ask the right questions to go. But the, the thing is for me, it was the passion the desire to really show as many people as possible how to build wealth. And I know even if you ever sit on one one and talk to people and show you on a piece of paper, you have to learn because I'm going to make sure that you learn and that you implement it. So what's your actual business model right now at Profit Jump Starter? All right. So with Profit Jump Starter, I do wealth coaching. I coach you. I hold your hand and show you what to do to make your money work for you. I hold your hand, support you, show you all the things set up. Because for a lot of persons, you know, we never born in money, but we know to make money. We're busy on the grind every day and we're making money. We're making money. But when we make the money, we don't know what to do with it. And the reason we don't know what to do with it is because we have never had money before. Nobody told us what to do when you make the money. Mm -hmm. When we're growing up, our parents said to us, you know, go study a book, get a good job. Go on, go do and buy a house. your work. And buy a house. Buy a house. Now that you buy a house and you have a good job and you're making the money, what next? 
Nobody don't tell it apart there. What do you do at that point? That's where I come in now and coach you and say, well, to take that money and put it to work for you so you can have generational wealth. This mm. is what you need to do. You need to consider these things. And we talk about everything. We talk, I teach you about the different types of investments. I teach you how they come together. And then you ultimately are going to make your decision on where you want to. I am not a financial advisor. Let me point that out. I am a coach. I teach and guide. And then you go and implement now with your advisor. But when you work with me, you're able to ask the right questions of the advisor. You're able to know for yourself and do your own due diligence on the all in time of cash plus reach you because you have learned what to do. And that is powerful because when you learn, you can go teach your friend, you can teach your kids. And then that's how everybody together will become wealthy because you're going to understand and you're going to take action. Exactly. So who mostly are your clients now? So a lot of persons who are busy working, making money, and then they don't know what to do when they make money. That is, that is my ideal person because they say, Keisha, I understand how to make money, but I don't know what to do after that. Those are the persons that I work with to say, all right, let us put some structure in place to, in what you're doing. Let me teach you how to create structure to build that wealth. What are some of the things you need to consider? How do you avoid stupid decisions? How do you avoid making stupid mistakes? Because your work's so hard for the money. Let's make sure that money is always there and it growing. And you don't go and make a decision that, you know, unravel everything that you work so hard for. So a lot of persons, if you say, well, you know, I'm busy making money, but once we make it, me don't know what comes next. Those persons, I coach them and show them how, show them the next part, the structure, the process, the systems to building generational wealth, sustainable wealth. That's what we do. Well, guys, you heard what she does, how she does it and how she's gotten there. Make sure you link up Keisha. How can they reach you? Uh, profitjumpstarter.com is the website. Make sure you go there. I'm also on Instagram, Profit Jump Starter, and on YouTube as well, Profit Jump Starter, with a lot of educational videos there that you can check out if you're interested in. All right, how do I build wealth? What do I need to do? What are the systems? What's the blueprint? How do I follow that? I also have a masterclass coming up this Thursday titled How to Protect Your Money. Because you work hard for that money. How do you protect it to make sure it's always there what you must look out for how you do due diligence everybody talking about due diligence how do you do that i'll be teaching on that this thursday um it's at 7 p.m if you want to register it's profitjumpstarter.com slash master class so you register there i am big on trust but verify trust the system but verify for yourself oh it's free Free. Doing a yes, free, free. Live class. <laughs> nice. Free. All right. I want you to get the education. That's my focus. The education so you can take action. Absolutely. Awesome stuff. And for those of you watching and thinking, but Kalila, don't you have your own class as well? I feel like you and I target slightly different segments. So I am more the person just getting started, 20s and 30s, and well, 40s too. Um, anybody who basically is starting from scratch and yeah. doesn't know much and is trying to get to that next level. And then I feel like once they get to that level and they're there, then Keisha pass over to Keisha now. It's like right. really, you take them right. to the next step. So That's why we're partnering on Money Mission because we exactly. want to make sure people get started. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, we're going to see you again in a few, Keisha. Yes. We'll be back <laughs> in the analyst segment. Uh, it was so great hearing your story. Yes. I see a lot of positive comments. And of course, we will be talking to you much more over the next year and future to come. Oh, yes. Thank you for having me on. I'm very excited to share the journey and the passion and, you know, looking forward to helping as many persons as possible. Because we have to build wealth. We have to one life. Let's make it our best life. Absolutely. All right. Well, it's time for our poll question this week. And it has to do with the latest development in SSL. Gina and Panton was finally arrested last week, and the authorities say that they expect to levy additional charges on her and on other people. That was the part that really stood out to me from the statement that other people are going to be charged. So what are your thoughts on Gina and Panton finally being arrested? A, let's hope the legal system doesn't drop the ball. 
B, is she the only one involved? Or C, oh, I missed the first one. A was about time, sorry, about time. B, let's hope the legal system doesn't drop the ball. C, is she the only one involved? Or D, other, and of course, leave a comment. Let us know what you think about that in the chat. And while you're at it, of course, you got to hit the like button. Up next, we've got your market recap and the analysts are standing by. This segment of Taking Stock was brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agency, insurance made easy. Hey, moneymakers, join the KRM fam with our official merch. Get it now at KhalilaReynolds.com. Let's get this money. The JC Combine Index lost 6,000 points or almost 2% last week. 127 stocks traded across the main and junior markets for the week ending Friday, February 17, 2023. 54 made gains, 63 lost value, and 10 stayed the same. 163 million shares changed hands on the Jamaican dollar market, valued at $731 million. One on One was the week's most traded stock. It took up 20% of market volume with 33 million shares trading. Everything Fresh traded the second highest. The stock opened this week at $1.40. And Image Plus Consultants rounded out last week's most traded with 9 million shares changing hands. The stock lost 4 cents to open Monday at $1.96. Now let's see who had the biggest gains for the week. JMMB 7.25% preference shares was the week's biggest gainer. The stock was up 39% to open Monday at $4.33. Margaritaville Turks USD was the second biggest gainer. It went up almost 30% to start the new week at 13 cents US. JPS 7% rounded out last week's biggest gains. The stock was up 21% to start the new week at $8.50. On the losing side now, MPC Caribbean Clean Energy was last week's biggest loser down almost 27%. The stock opened Monday at $63.11. Blue Power Group had the second biggest dip last week. The stock was down 16% to open the new week at $2.09. And KLE Group also fell 16%, closing the week at $1.74. Over on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, the Composite Index lost 4 points last week. Massey was the most traded stock. It opened this week at $4.50 TT. Endeavor Holdings was the market's biggest gainer up 9% to open this week at $11 TT. And on the losing side, One Caribbean Media fell 9% to open Monday at $3.17 TT. Over in the US, the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq were mostly flat last week, while the S&P 500 lost half a percent. Gas prices rose $3.06 last week, while regular diesel saw a 19% increase, and low self diesel went up 25 cents. In foreign exchange, it took an average $154.98 Jamaican to purchase one US dollar last Friday. That's seven cents less than a week before. Meanwhile, it took an average $115.20 Jamaican to purchase one Canadian dollar. One British pound cost an average $184.63 Jamaican. And you could buy one euro for $169.38 Jamaican on average. Finally, on the crypto markets, Bitcoin prices rose 2% over the past five days, with a cryptocurrency trading at 24830 on Monday. And Ethereum also rose 2%, trading at $1,707 on Monday. This segment of Taking Stock, the Analysts, is brought to you by JMMB Group, your best interest at heart. Disclaimer, this is not intended as financial advice. Please consult a licensed financial advisor before making investment decisions. Welcome back. And just before we introduce the analyst panel, let me take some more of your comments. And we have a lot of them. Christina is bigging up the teacher, Keisha. Richie says, like this video, share with a friend. Let's all get this money. Richie, I have it down, Patman. Javon was telling me happy birthday. Thank you, Javon. Steve was, say, was telling Keisha that he loves the Valentine's nuggets that you shared the other day. Strong link said money trail train get derailed. No worries. And pointing out that you're a Matt's brain, Keisha. He said by the time he started learning about FX trading, everything crashed. And noting that lesson, this is so true. What looks too good to be true 
usually is too good to be true. Re Olint and Cash Plus and all of that money train had stopped, noted Oren. Oshane says, This sounds, I think this sounds like it just worked out for you in time. Uh, Omar, please advise in using assets to fund your lifestyle. We'll try to see if we have time to get to that one. Uh, is my battery dying? No, not quite yet. Orville says, really, Keisha, explain to me how I can transfer this money from my mind into my bank account. <laughs> Boy, I wish we, we could all do that. Roswell saying, well done, Keisha. I never knew you had those experiences. I am elated listening to your financial journey and saying investment really isn't hard. People are lazy minded in reading. Most of my input is reading. That's how I make my money. That part is so true. If you just read the things people ask me in DMs all the time, it's like, you guys can Google that. Why are you bother asking me? <laughs> or at least ask the relevant person. They're going to DM me asking something about JPS, like ask JPS, you know, or as the relevant person, as the relevant authority, or DM me asking me something about TAJ. If you, if you have to wait in line, I, ask TAJ, you know, why are you asking me? Just read. Yeah. Anyway, time now for the analysts. And I'm joined once again by Keisha Bailey, who is a financial consultant and also CEO of Profit Jumpstarter. And let's welcome back Clive Charlton, an equities trader at JMMB. Hey, Clive. Welcome back, Keisha. Hey. Hey, thanks for having me again. Hey, Keisha, oh, how are you doing? Pleasure. Hey, Clive. Oh, Good. All right. So let's jump into... Clive's topic first, and that is Tropical Batteries Financial Performance and Outlook. Tropical Battery listed, is it two years already since they yes, listed? Two years, now? exactly. Yeah, about well, two years now. Mm -hmm. So their financial outlook, uh, their financial performance, sorry, and their outlook based on their plans to expand. Yes, yes. No, interestingly, um, thanks for having me again. Um, and, you know, Hi, and Happy New Year to your guest also. It might, have, might be the first time since here. So thanks for having me again. Anyway, let's go into it quickly. Tropical battery. Interestingly, the market is very right. The market is good. And I think let me, the market provides an opportunity for you and I, the ordinary Jane and Joe, to own a piece of a business without starting a business. Right? And the interesting thing about an IPO, that when you're buying into an IPO, chances are it's the cheapest you'll get the stock to buy at any point in time. So I believe, my, per, my personal view, and I think it makes sense, is that part of the strategy this year is that you always have some cash for IPOs. Of course, due diligence, you know, advisor reps, etc. Let's go into Tropical. Tropical manufactures larger. We know them for batteries, car batteries, truck batteries, all type of automotive batteries. They actually manufacture and repair these things. And I like that because... We're really adding value here rather than just buying and trading, right? Um, they're also into other automotive type um, products, for example, um, uh, uh, brake fluid, uh, um, uh, distilled water, uh, oil, etc. branded products, right? Uh, they may manufacture some, they add value on some, which means that they may import them partially uh, produced and they complete them or finish them. That is good, right? And they, they came to the public to raise some capital. When they came to the public in September 2020, uh, they really raised probably about 160 something million dollars. And I thought to myself, that is very, very small. But we understand the real value of coming to the market, too significant value. The tax break, long term, for the next 10 years. But I think that there's a greater value that comes to these companies, right? It opens them up a significant opportunity just by being a public listed entity and i think tropical has benefited significantly from that uh, opportunity of just being public so the raise are 160 million dollars their financials looked good at the point in time right uh in september when they came public their profit in 2020 19 they used 2019 financials to come public uh 2020 half year june third quarter june but let's focus on 2019 their profit at the end of september 2019 their financial year end was 50 million dollars almost 51 million jamaican dollars as at september 2022 just a few months ago it was 208 million jamaican dollars that's almost a quadrupling of profits right um oh. so you can see the benefit now yeah yeah that's the type of growth i've seen 
interesting little for a brand new company, especially a company being listed on the junior market that is getting a tax break, uh, just get capital. It's kind of surprising when they pay dividends. I'm not too gung-ho on companies just coming to the market and then paying dividends. You should retain the cash. However, this company has declared dividends three times since being public. So it has rewarded its shareholders, not only in terms of price movement, but also in terms of cash flow through dividend payment. So it really has done well. Right? Uh, let's look at now also its balance sheet. I always say and note, we should think fundamental. I know that there's this high speculative type of emotions into the market now, and we've seen it just recently. In fact, I've had discussion with my other trader, Greg, and some other traders in the industry as to what is happening in the market, um, who are people positioning themselves, and I realize that there is a lot. We're happy for the new entrance. The participation rate in the market has gone up, but you really focus on fundamentals first and foremost. Structure a strong portfolio, and of course, speculation, short term day trading week trading is always a part of the thing it's exciting and you kind of squeeze the narrow gains that's perfectly fine and it's a great learning opportunity but the substantial amount of your portfolio substantial amount should be long term because this is where the value is now when tropical came public several things tropical did um tropical had a their profit has grown almost quadruple in just two years time the stock price has grown um from a dollar traded as high as three dollars it is now down to about $2.25. But in two years' time, it grew by more than 200%. In two years' time, as of today, it's now 125% up. Divide that by two, that's about 60% uh, per year gain. So again, if you had bought and hold, you'd be definitely in the black. Even though um, several, you know, crisis has, has hit the global economy, right? First, um, logistics issue. And the price rise on shortages from COVID. And now, this again, this war we have a commodity issue, price rise, um, fiscal tightness globally. Right? But that has done fairly well nonetheless. Also, too, I talk about a strong balance sheet. Having a, What do I mean by a strong balance sheet? The assets must be properly weight, what, what's the proper, weighted, if that's a proper term. Um, for example, uh, you know, your debt ratios, um, your solvency ratio. What are your debt ratio? That is your debt to assets. It must be properly balanced. The tropical came to the market to raise more capital. That is, increase their shareholdership. They get money that they don't have to pay interest on. So rather than raise debt, they raise equity capital. That improved the balance sheet. Immediately also, once I became listed, ta that tax break um, was added. So not only does that add eventual value to the balance sheet, but... At the turn of the quarterly presentation of financial statements, they saved on taxes right there. That again boosted the PL, that allows them to pay dividends quickly and also added value to the balance sheet. That value added because that profit each period after you take out all sorts of costs, including dividend payment, that now goes into your balance sheet. And that is what we call the balance sheet, your war chest. It's the value, excess of asset over liabilities. That's what they call residual value that belongs to you, the shareholder. If anything happens, assets are sold off. That difference between assets and liabilities belong to you. And they want to fatten that over time. Why? Assuming, God forbid, something happens to the company and there's a forced sale, the wider that difference between asset and liability, it means that if there's a flash sale, how much low can you sell your assets for? There is value left for you, the shareholder equity. That also gives the company in a good position because the company now is able to go to the market to raise additional capital shareholders will say this is a help company. it has a big cushion i can give them more money raise more shares increase the shareholdership that's one also they can borrow more money on the market and they have done that over the period you see so bondholders are willing to give them cash and they have 250 million i think about a couple hundred million again and nearly a billion dollars right but also when they're signing deals, as they did just recently with this Dumrep company, that Dumrep company is looking at several things. They improve financial performance, especially a strong balance sheet, which is important. They improve profit and loss. We know that the tax holiday benefit is in that, contribute to that. But also significantly, transparency. They must publish their financial statement. They must make disclosure in nearly everything that happens in that company, including we have seen that related parties have been buying up the shares. 
Mm. At least three publications on the stock exchange price were related party. And then we saw the movement in stock price. We see these deals being struck. You see? Now, that's perfectly fine. But it's an indication to you, the health balance sheet, right? And then you look at, of course, PNL profit, um, dividends, but also they're able to structure these deals. The acquisition, I think that is a little bit speculative if you're looking on the acquisition by related party, but we have seen with a few companies when it's a consistent related party and um, transactions, purchasing, hmm, you know, it might be that something is being struck there, right? And this is some good value in the company while they are now acquiring more shares in the market space. But that Isn't that, wouldn't now, that be inside of trading the five? If when are these um, uh, it, you know, being made before or after well, the announcement? Um, I did not check the date, but it's over a period of time. And here's the thing. They make immediately as they strike some form of discussion that they believe may be of material significance. They must disclose it. So all these information are disclosed to the stock exchange and then published on the JC website within two days of it being disclosed. Right? So these transactions usually take place in the market, number one, and usually after any disclosure to the stock exchange in terms of uh, they are in some negotiation in terms of they have raised additional capital in terms of changing directorship or management structure. All these things are disclosed and then you may see transactions happen. And it happens in the market also. And usually these transactions, they are not generally negotiated among significant shareholders. They come into the market and pay the market price for it. Right? So it, it, it is fairly open, transparent, and fully disclosed. Right? And it is done discreetly over time. That is, is not a, usually not heavy blocks, but pieces and small pieces over a period of time. And it accumulates. But I usually look at that. You see? This what is happening in the company is there some value being added potential value but i would not be too concerned also this is a brand new company and just looking at the financials the company is really in good stead already so i fundamentally looking at the fundamentals not the speculative part of it meaning that sometimes when prices dip we're worried and we rush sell or when you see the price going up everybody runs in looking at the fundamentals it's already indicative where the company is going the direction so it's not surprising at all yeah but what is interesting? So let's just give though, our viewers um, a little background up about what we're talking about. Uh, Tropical Battery entering the Dominican Republic. What they did is they yes. just entered into agreement to acquire fifty percent interest of a solar photo. What is it? That word photovoltaic engineering company named Kaya Energy yeah, Group. Yes, yes. So Kaya Energy Group, based in the DR. So they're acquiring yes. fifty percent of that company of this entity exactly and again this is the value i like and what i like those are companies especially like them are just they're not just trading companies they're not just merchants they're adding value so they are bringing jobs to jamaica they are bringing technical expertise or developing technical expertise because here's the thing now tropical battery um this company what does it do uh let me read here formed in 2022 tropical renewable energy serves to establish tropical batteries footprint in the renewable energy and electric mobility solution space separate from its automotive products operation so they are really moving into a value added high technology high income era of business right and they're expanding their footprint which means that they are diversifying their revenue stream outside of jamaica in a market that which has what smart. 11 million i remember when they did 11 million I remember when they did the IPO, Clive, one of the questions about the sustainability of Tropical Batteries' business model is, aren't we moving towards electric mm -hmm. vehicles anyway? How soon before batteries yes. become obsolete? Yes. That was one of the questions raised about yes. their uh, one of the potential threats to their business. And so now they're diversifying mm -hmm. and going into solar. Exactly. And what I would hope also, I'm sure they'll move to that. Batteries are a component of of the new um, environmental friendly business and you know in the practices right so right now they make all sorts of different automotive batteries which the technology we know will put that into the trunk but hopefully they'll move eventually to making batteries that can move a vehicle for electric vehicles rather than batteries to start and turn over an engine right and run various aspect electrical aspect of the motor car so that i hope is where they are going you see but what is also interesting too 
prior to that, let me just quickly um, indicate a few things here. Uh, they had raised capital. They had raised capital um, about three or four times. Where is that information? Where did I put that? Right. Um, Tropical Battery had raised uh, capital um, several times. It raised about $250 million in June 2022. Uh, they entered into an agreement in early 2021 to raise some additional capital. And just recently, they floated again a bond to raise, I think it might have been six, $700 million. So we can see where that money now is going. Um, it's being directed into the acquisition and development of new business lines. Right? But prior to that, they had an agreement with CAC, another listed entity, right? Where they set up a new company called Env. Let me read clearly. I just want to have it. Env. The word E N E N R V A T E. I think it's a play on environment or Envirate, right? A company duly incorporated under the guidelines of the company's office of Jamaica. That, that will start and it started official production in June 2021. What they do, they are adding value here. Let me read what they are doing here. The joint venture in line with CSE 2000 developed complementary partnership, which is in keeping with CSEs and Tropical's um, business line purpose, right? Um, what they're doing here, they're leading, um, developing expertise in energy and indoor environmental quality by engineering solutions and providing products and services that sustain healthy, comfortable, and productive indoor environment. So here, they seem to be going into a product, what you call um, a consultancy uh, designing type uh, business model where companies being established now, part of building a, a building now is no longer simply running electrical wires. You really have to plan how you're going to save energy. We see NCB now has solar panels on their rooftop. JMB has solar panels and installed some more. Uh, I think a few years ago, you know, there was like NCB said that they saved like a couple hundred million, probably nearly a hundred million dollars in electrical bills. So this is where they are going. They can say that they are building out, you know, a vertical integration in terms of their energy offering, their production offering, etc. Right, and um, I think this augurs well for the company. And yeah, the, 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 the security. I see Philip here noting that electric vehicles need batteries even more so than ICE yes. vehicles. Mm. Yes. All right. Yes. So who Certainly. is this ideal for? Do you see? Well. I gather from your presentation, Clive, that you see good prospects for this company, Tropical Battery. Is this an ideal investment for a high risk investor, low risk, moderate? Who, yes. who should be looking, yeah, at, yes. looking at You know, I think it's not, I think conservative, even low risk investors can invest in this company, but it's about um, horizon, investment horizon. And this is where I began by saying use fundamental and look at the balance sheet especially why uh just looking at some of the valuation metric of this company no i can compare to perhaps wigton is the best comparison and mpc uh clean caribbean energy when you look at some of the valuation metric it is properly valued when compared to them you know uh the pe wigton p is about 13 times which is the price how much it is trading above its earnings per share right and Wigton, the other day, declared some good revenue, had some good revenue, right? Um, 13 times. Uh, MPC Clean Caribbean Energy, its PE is about 33 times. So Tropical Battery really has better valuation than MPC Clean Energy. That, again, is another longer-term security. And they, they, they have a more narrow business line and business focus than Tropical Battery. Tropical Battery has really expanded, right? Um, so I can understand that. Also, Tropical Battery is much smaller. So the prospect for growth is more significant. Right? So it has good value in going into the long term. Right? And I would think that we should focus more on that. Let me look at some of the prices of Tropical Valley and how it has moved. Um, just over the last few years, right? Tropical Battery. Um, when you look at some of the prices of Tropical Battery, it has moved when it just came public. Tropical Battery had um its allocation was about fifty thousand base allocation plus about thirty three percent huh so you got minimum at base fifty thousand plus thirty three percent of the allotment and the market was fairly okay with that I don't think the market had that heavy speculative element at that time right the stock price moved up post IPO listing about thirty percent up to about a dollar thirty 
eased back down to about a dollar twenty dollar fifteen and it traded there for probably about five six months yeah? it was in the latter part of the year that the stock price started to move up again it traded as high as three dollars and four cents just uh last year probably about august september and it has since retreated right now the results just published should move the price up again for the the first quarter ending december showed an appreciable increase in profits and also the balance sheet is even more strengthened now right so again and i think this again has enabled that deal so the long-term fundamental looks good right we're speaking on tropical battery but i'd like to also speak to the investing public about again we'll focus on long term look for value in the market now the market seem to be this, this is the speculative part of the market the market has now gotten used to having the five to ten percent allotment and the market used that as a gauge as to say how the stock price might perform immediately mm -hmm. post listing we have seen where there were five and ten percent allotment and we see where stock prices within two or three days of being listed run up all 50 60 percent note however that these prices always retreat why well if i can lock in 20 30 40 50 60 percent in two three three days then certainly at that point in time it's time for me to sell so the price always comes back down as the sellers begin to outweigh the buyers that happens and we see where prices kind of retreat and then we might see some movement when next result comes out just recently there was an ipo and the market yo, oh, we, we, we were on your program right and you were reading some of the 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 response twitter social media to uh, response and person said mm -hmm. 35 percent that not going anywhere that was um but the medical that, one jmmb yes. was the lead on that one apex yes apex IPCL. apex yes right but if you look at the tropical price movement go onto the stock exchange website look at the tropical price movement same way it eased up about 20 percent and it stayed there lagged there for the next five six months and then over time we see the improvement in the financials we see the improvement in deals being struck we see them raising more capital in the market space of course debt capital mostly post equity capital right and then we see them structuring these deals with cac and now with this dumb rep company right and we can see them diversifying and expanding their productive base which again should drive value going into the future so i'm telling the investing public do not look so much on you should be happy when you have a good allotment right 35 percent is not bad 35 percent is good because what has happened with most of the previous IPOs that the one they put a little bit of shares if you look at the number of shares that were placed on the market they put a little bit on the market and then a good portion of that sometimes more than half of that amount is going to priority applicant so what goes to the general public is so small so tight it's very very highly probable that it will be heavily oversubscribed and therefore you know persons will come back onto the market post IPO to pull the price up now when you have a more equitable allocation you should say to yourself there's great value especially when you look at the fundamentals and the financials when you have a stock that is older than elite when it came public came to the market at a better pe ratio value than elite has a strong balance sheet raised half a billion dollars and already if you look at the, the publications go onto the stock exchange website look at the readings and they have already sourced high-tech equipment we should not only expand capacity but also improve efficiency look at the health sector and the deals that are being struck with the government in terms of uh private sector public sector partnership because the government hospital obviously cannot and we know cannot handle some of the medical cases in terms of diagnostic and other other types like that and they are now forming partnership with with um private companies so look at these things to say compared to tropical battery and how it has moved over the period where the news are now coming out the improvement in balance sheet and pnl what will happen with this company should i just simply base my trading or my lightness of this company simply to the allotment at ipo you know we really should be thinking fundamental and thinking long term of course right so i say look out for the next two years and and a year and a half or so when the result comes out now, also interestingly with that IPO too. Great the points, The November Clive. results came out. Yeah. I want to bring Keisha in. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll okay. give you one last point so we can bring Keisha in because we have another yes. topic to discuss yes. as well. Okay. Go <laughs> right ahead. All right. Okay, good. I'm just so, saying, just think fundamental, think long term. 
Great, great points yeah. on all fronts. Yeah. Great points. All right, Keisha, you are looking at the international market, specifically the Dow Jones. It has closed 400 points lower. Was that today? As it was, it was, today it was much lower as well. Um, but big thing with it is that one year anniversary of the Russia-Ukraine war. It's been one year since Russia began its invasion of Ukraine. Still ongoing, so one very long year. A lot of persons in the media have been classifying this as a failure for Russia because they have spent a whole lot of money um, fighting this war. They've put out a lot of resources into fighting the war. They've gotten a lot of sanctions from countries. They've been cut off by a lot of governments. They've been cut off by a lot of financial institutions. And they're still going. They're still going one year into it. And now we see President Biden from the U.S. going to Ukraine. He was seen walking with the, the president of Ukraine, you know, doing a tour, even still while missiles are coming into the Ukraine. That still is, you know, for Russia, very sad um, for them because they would have lost a lot financially and economically from this war and still no result. Nothing has come of it. What's happening now is that in the financial markets, we're seeing fall off in prices coming back. A lot because oil prices have been coming down, but also, you know, they're still worried about inflation and interest rates being a problem. Inflation numbers in the U.S. are still high. Persons are starting to bring up back the R word. It's creeping all, you know, the little R word of recession. And that's caused you now that downturn in the Dow Jones and other major indices within the U.S. So big things happen in the war, one year to the day, and also the, the stock market in the U.S. and the international markets coming lower because of what's happening. Wow. So what should we look out for now as a result of that? Well, um, for me, lower prices create opportunities. I think, you know, Clive was saying something along those lines as well. We think long term, we use these pullbacks as buying opportunities. So we seek out really strong companies, strong balance sheets, and we use these periods of weakness, periods when everybody are panic, we stay ready and we think about, all right, how can I get into some of these really strong companies right now? Because the opportunity is there. You know, I have not been following this Russia-Ukraine story as closely as I should. I kind of get war fatigue after the first few months. <laughs> is there, but you have been because of its impact on the markets. Is there any indication as to when they might wrap things up? I hate to say it like no. that. <laughs> <laughs> what are they gonna, you know, um, it's still going. I mean, Russia is still there with the missiles going through. Um, it's really cost them a lot, but still they have enough um, funds still available to them to keep deploying. But you have the U.S. coming in to back the Ukraine saying, you know, they are going to be defending them. So for I, I don't see an end. But what's more important is that the impact on the financial markets is becoming less significant. So the war is right. ongoing. When it just started last year, February, I don't know how many people can recall, but in major news, all of the stock markets across the world were falling. Oil prices were shooting up like nothing. Everybody was buying Fesco. Everybody buying oil stocks because oil prices were moving so fast. One year later, still war. We're not looking at oil stocks. People have kind of moved on to the next story, to the next. Yeah, I think it's become the norm now. We've learned to live with it. Just like COVID, you kind of learn to live with it, unfortunately, for a war. Yeah. Yeah. It shouldn't be something that you learn to live yes. with. But it's become the status mm -hmm. quo now that we just have to accept that this is the situation in Russia and Ukraine. Yeah. And I mean, with President Biden actually going to Ukraine, it signals, you know, that it shows the U.S.'s position on, on the entire dispute and still going on. I mean, Russia not backing down, Ukraine not backing down, Ukraine getting support. So, But the impact financially isn't as significant as it used to be. Mm. Meanwhile, in the U.S., we have the Dow Jones uh, closing low, and we have another inflation report out, a hot inflation report. Give us the highlights on what's going on there. So inflation in the U.S. around 6% no, still high because, you know, the Fed target is much lower at that 2 to 3%, so still high inflation. Um, because of that, 
we're getting talks about more rate increases. The U.S. Federal Reserve is saying, look here, inflation is not where we want it to be. We're going to continue to increase interest rates. When the market hears that, people panic and say, well, can interest rates really go any higher than where they are? And they start selling stocks, especially these tech companies, you know, which got really beaten up a lot this year. So persons start coming out of risky assets, Bitcoin, tech stocks. People start selling them and say, you know what, let me try to keep my money because hard times may be coming. I want to keep my money close to me. Yeah. Well, thanks once again, Keisha, for yes. all the information that you keep bringing to us. Thanks so much, Clive. We're going to take a quick break and come back with final comments from the audience. This segment of Taking Stock, the Analysts, was brought to you by JMMB Group, your best interest at heart. Hey, moneymakers, it's not an official fan if you don't have our merch. I'm so used to hearing that ad at that spot. All right, so comments. Cl uh, Anthony says, Clive's analysis is always informative. I like it. True. Agreed. I always look forward to Clive on the show. Anthony again says, we need the show to be two hours. It's way too interesting for just an hour. Let me know if you guys agree. <laughs> Should we go that long? I feel like that's kind of long still. Do you know that taking stuff was originally supposed to be half an hour? Like the original concept of the show was a half an hour show. And within about three months, if even that long, I realized half an hour is like impossible for all the things that come out of this show. So we went to an hour and quite often we go uh, somewhat over that hour. Roswell says, directors know when to make a sale as well as other connected parties. So long term is more of an understanding of business and company outlook that can change under varied situations. That's true. Kai says, I'm looking for IPCL staying near or below IPO because I'll average down and strengthen my shareholdings in the background with a good company. Steve bigging up Clive. Roswell again saying Tropical will do great in the near future. They're exposed to a big market that would be the DR, Dominican Republic, that carries more profit as that country has four times Jamaica's population. And let me note as well, Tropical Battery is owned by a group of people who have experience in going into different countries. Not, not Spanish speaking though. So the Melvilles also own Choca. Choca is in about four or five Caribbean countries. So they know how to take a brand and scale it at least regionally. Steve says, ladies, convert the Get Vex money into IPO money. Shelly Ann says, anytime Clive comes on, you know it's time to take notes. Absolutely true. Roswell again says, it's an excellent time to invest. However, I doubt some will make it in the investment world as the price of stocks are trading very low and those with no understanding are selling off. I got a DM today from somebody concerned that their portfolio is down by about 33%. And they listed the stocks in their portfolio. And one of the stocks in that portfolio was NCB. And I was like, well, when did you buy? Because, you know, NCB been coming down. Um, and that alone is going to drag your portfolio. And the person who DM me was like, should I sell? Because I feel like I need to sell now because I don't want to lose any more money. And he said that his advisor actually advised him against selling at this time to, you know, wait it out. Um, I did not give him advice because I am not an investment advisor. Um, I just replied with my perspective. I won't tell you what I told him, but it was not investment advice. But just to uh, elucidate the point that Roswell is making, that a lot of people who don't understand are now selling. Uh, Levar says, can't miss taking stock. Me and my three-month-old here watching. I love it. Get the kiddies involved. Get the kiddies interested. Uh, Roswell says the way school teaches students will have more and more financial illiterates with heavy debt after college and no returns on their hard earned money. That's why it's important to do what Navarre is doing and watch the show with your kids. Educate your children about money. Luke wanted to know if Keisha's masterclass is free. Yes, it is free. Go to profitjumpstarter.com to register. That class comes up on Thursday. My class is not free, however, but coming up Friday through Sunday, I do have a big sale, 
40% off, four zero. Just because I turned 40 and I'm feeling generous, you're gonna get 40% off my class. But it's, a, it's a, a different approach from what you're gonna see Keisha doing. She's focusing on a specific topic on Thursday. My class takes you through a range of different things and you have different outcomes. So go to kalilareynolds.com slash masterclass to learn more about that. Let me see if we have any final comments here. Uh, Clive uh, Orville wants, us, wants Clive to do an analysis on Proven. I've been hearing people asking for Proven. We've invited them on the show a few times. They have not been able to make it so far, but yes, we do need to get an update for, from Proven. And then he says he'd listen to Clive for an hour. Hire that man then. Get him as your personal advisor if he's available. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our show this week. Thank you so much for tuning in yet another week. Thank goodness um, my cough kind of held up and you didn't hear me in the background uh, coughing up a storm, fortunately. Uh, I still feel a little bit stuffy, but it's okay. We survived. Make sure you guys click the like button on YouTube or on Facebook. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet and share this video with a friend. You heard what Keisha said earlier in the show. We want to help people learn more about money so we can get this money together. We want investing to be the new sexy. We want it to be cool to talk about money. We want these conversations to be normal around the corner. You book up your friend and be like, which stocks you have in your portfolio? Are you up or down this month? You know, what did you do to be up? How come man is down? You know, let these conversations just start being a part of our regular culture. Also subscribe to the newsletter at kalilareynolds.com slash newsletter. When you do so, you get a copy of my free broker guide and make sure you turn on the post notifications so you can be the first to see everything when it drops so that we can help people learn more about money. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Kalila Ray. I do not have any other pages. This is my only page. I don't have any backup pages. Uh, be wary of the spelling. Many of the fake pages, they will put an extra A in there, an extra I, an extra E, extra Y. They might put a full stop or an underscore somewhere in it so that the name looks almost identical, but it's not quite. Yeah. So this is my only page. I don't have any other pages other than KRM underscore business news. And I, sometimes I feel like I should deactivate that page just so that people don't get confused and feel like that's another scam account, but we do not DM you for money. I only do business through my website, kalilareynolds.com. I'll never ask you for money in the DMs. That's not how this works. All right. If you want to connect with the analysts this week, check the description box for their contact information and also visit the website kalilareynolds.com for financial information you can use however you like it. You can watch, you can listen to the podcast on all podcast platforms, or you can read our articles. And of course, we want you to tell a friend about taking stock. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Let's get this money. <laughs>